Let's see what Ken Callender thinks about a race called the Rawson Stakes. Well, everyone's told you this is a match between the champs, Bone Crusher and our Waverley Star. Well, I'm going to be a little bit different. I'm going to tip TAB number two a bit like her. Sure, I think the champs will be hard to beat, but I think there's uh, slight things against both of them. First of all, I don't think either horse is quite uh, in the champion bracket of a horse like Kingston Town, and I think they can be beaten. Bone Crusher will be hard to beat, but I think he'd prefer something a little bit longer, and I think we'll see the best of him in a fortnight in the Tancred Stakes. Our Waverley Stars form's excellent, and he did win the Chipping Norton Stakes at Warwick Farm in good style a fortnight ago. However, I think a bit like her who finished third in that race turned in a better run. He'll be 10 to 1. The two champs will be a lot shorter. I'm going for the value. Now, Ken hasn't let uh, sentiment uh, influence his thoughts about the Rawson Stakes. Good on you, Ken. He's a great horse, a bit like her, and the small field will certainly help him. Well, the Bond airship uh, seems to turn up wherever there's a big crowd, and there it is hovering over Rose Hill Racecourse on Rawson Stakes Day. Righto, stay with us on Wide World of Sports and we'll bring you up to date on the Westfield Ultra Marathon. 3 the Tishu and Mio graduation. It's over about 1,800 metres for three-year-olds and over. And we had John O'Neill as our commentator earlier in the day, but we have Ron Paps now. Let's take you to Ron for the running of the third event as an attendant climbs in with one of the runners. Settle a bit better now. Had some threatening rain clouds about, but nothing's happened. They're off. High Tower missed it only about two lengths today, so that's an improvement on its last start. And away quickly, Roe Besk, and also going quickly, Baron down. Away uh, well with them was always aloft, and around the outside Royal Standard, and up in the thick of things, up and over peak as he takes hold now of Roe Besk to settle off the pace. Triple Lark next from Viscount Gilgood, Chugark back in that division, is now shuffling back. High Man 2 and up ahead of it with Spudman. High Tower working through on the rail. Bomb Alley, new statement, Brogan further back sharp pillow and after beginning fairly well Chugark's getting back to second last and uh, over on its outside now as it drops back to last in fact is spot on target 1200 to go Royal Standard led by a couple of lengths and showed the way clearly in second placing over on the outside is uh, up and over Pete followed by Baron down always aloft has been right up there then Roe Best followed by Triple Lark and Viscount Gilgit around Spudman High Tower the rail and then High Man 2 they were followed by Bomb Alley a length and a half then to New Statement broke and in the centre, Sharp Pillow's off three deep, asked a question. Two to spot on target and nearly three lengths away, last of all is Chugark. As they race before the turn, the leader Royal Standard, a length and a half up and over Pete, always aloft, goes up to third. Back along the inside, Baron down, two lengths away, Robesque and Triple Luck, the inner. Another length and a half, Spud Man, Viscount Gilgood hasn't had much luck, it's been wide throughout. Then further back to High Man 2, followed by High Tower, Bomb Alley, new statement. They were followed by Brogan as they swing from Sharp Pillow, spot on target and forget all about the other one, Chugark. Into the straight they come, Royal Standard clear and out into the open going up and over Pete and always aloft to coming at it now. Always aloft, ranges up with up and over Pete and Royal Standard whips are cracking. Up and over Pete in the centre, just the leader from always aloft, Royal Standard. They've had their chance to get up and over Pete. They can't grab this horse and up and over Pete after a luckless second the other day is going to be just a little too solid for always aloft. Gets home a half three quarters. Third Royal Standard then Viscount Gilgut a good run under the circumstances. High man two and row Besk in a line, then Bomb Alley followed by Brogan spot on target, Triple Lark, then New Statement High Tower followed by Spudman, further back in the field then to Sharp Pillow amongst the last ones in, last of all was Baron down and tailed off was Chugark. Up and over Pete, number five successful in the third event in Adelaide, second placing to number 15 always aloft and third number three Royal Standard, five, 15 and three, the placings as called by Ron Paps in the third event, up and over Pete. In race four, conceded. And they're just about ready to go right on starting time. The Sandown Country Cup. We will wait Sky Monarch to complete the line now. Sky Monarch to go in. Coming forward now. Field of 13. Sky Monarch's gone in. And the line is good. The light is on. And they're racing this time. On the outside, Sky Monarch and My Regard have gone away fairly well with Mintmaster. Recap began well down towards the inside with Sir Sapphire. And uh, they're having trouble sorting themselves out for a leader here. Fiery Aspect going up in the centre. And it's Fiery Aspect with Sir Sapphire recap. A line of three and My Regard caught out four deep. They're followed by Sir Fleet up there from Skipton Town, Mandershot. Then Sky Monarch, Nakundra the rail from Cheppy's Gold. Further back in the field then came Peter Bird. Second last is Mintmaster and exact last of all. As they go down 
down the back and recap is now the leader by a length. Sir Sapphire second, a length and a half fiery aspect on the fence, Nakundra. Then Skipton Town between them, followed by My Regard racing deep. So too a Sky Monarch man to shot back on the inside of Sir Fleet from Cheppy's goal, fiery aspect. Met Master and last of all is exact on the turn at the 900 metre mark. Recap the leader in the country cup, a half in front of Sir Sapphire, two lengths further back is fiery aspect. Fourth is Nakundra, fifth the outside there is My Regard, a length and a half into Sky Monarch racing deep around Sir Fleet, Skipton Town, man to shot the rail. Then Peter Bird further back in the field, Chappie's Gold, and Exact and Mitt Master are both at the tail. They swing for home, and Sir Sapphire raced up on the outside to join Recab. When they turned from My Regard further out, joining in behind the field, then at the head of the others would have been back on the inside, man to shot from Skipton Town. Nakundra going for a run, and now Exact is getting out and coming home well with Sky Monarch. 200 out, and Sir Sapphire in front, but Exact is starting to gobble them up on the outside as they race with 150 to go. Nakundra the leader, but Exact is going to get him on the outside. Exact races up to Nakundra, takes the lead, and a great performance. Exact in front of Nakundra near the line, and Exact gets the money by ahead. Nakundra, three lengths away, third. Mittmaster might have got up to run third ahead of Sir Sapphire, then my regard. A gap in the field, Sky Monarch recab, and then Skipton Town, Peter Bird, then Cheppy's gold, Mandershot, with Sir Fleet and Fiery Aspect as the last runner in. A oh, great performance by Exact, coming from last on the home turn. And he's mowed them down on the outside. Number seven, Exact, ridden by Philip Alderman. Number seven is the winner, Exact, of the uh, Sandown Country Cup. Number seven, Exact, P. Alderman first. Number two is second, Nakundra, ridden by G. Willits, and the judges called on the photo for third. Uh, the grey might finish just in time, Mint Master on the outside and get third. He's got a little bit of momentum, not much in it. Sir Sapphire and Mint Master there for the third placing, but what a great performance by Exact. A clear last uh, mid-race at the 800 metre mark. I've, uh, I've watched the source on the country tracks and he's quite capable of doing anything Exact, but she can get out of his ground. Number three has got third on the inside, Sir Sapphire. Number three, seven, two and three, seven, two, three after the country cup. So Mint Master's only missed by an inch. Uh, one more bound and he does get up and get third prize. Now the winner Exact... Today is to work out how a race is going to be run. Facts and figures, plus a big computer with no knowledge of racing, adds up to a losing punter. Yes, yet another uh, tip from uh, Kenny Callender there. And here on My World of Sports, we brought you some outstanding sports events over the years, but I can't recall a more fantastic horse race than the one we're about to present. This is the Rawson Stakes, run at weight for age over 2,000 metres at Rose Hill. And what extraordinary interest it's generated this afternoon with the clash of those two arch rivals from the WS Cox Plate, the mighty Bone Crusher and our Waverley Star, this time with the Melbourne Cup winner, Atalak, thrown in for good measure. And... Uh, I think the distance is an interesting. I mean, 2,000 metres, you know that uh, Athalak's 3,200, the Melbourne Cup, although he, you know, he can win over 2,000. Yeah. Then you've got Bone Crusher, probably loves the 2,400. It's just got all the ingredients and the three horses ridden by different jockeys, not their regular race jockeys. Yes, it's been a tremendous build-up to the race. I reckon over the last month everybody's been talking about this confrontation and listening to Johnny Tapp on the radio this morning, he was talking about the distance being the key to it. So uh, I think I... he's right mm. and I think it will suit our Waverley star and uh, I think Mick Dittman's probably the best of the jocks who've uh, come in there yeah. and uh, I've probably put the mocker on it but <laughs> I've had something on Russ Hens's horse. And out there at the track to uh, set the scene for this classic confrontation from the Nine Networks News, a journalist who just loves a punt himself, our Johnny Gatfield. Well, thanks, Mike. And uh, you know that feeling you get before a grand final or perhaps before a title fight? Well, that's what it's like out here at Rose Hill today for the clash of these great champions. We don't know how many people are here. The club was uh, catering for about 30,000, we know that, and it must be getting fairly close to that. At least two hours before the first race, the fans were starting to arrive. And you could tell pretty quickly that some of these people would never have missed this day for anything. Oh, uh, bone crusher. Why? Oh, uh, I think he's um, next to far left. Oh, I've been coming here for 70 odd years. What do you reckon about the Rawson Stakes today? Who's going to win? It'll be a terrific battle. We're a toss of the coin, I think. The big three in the Rawson Stakes were allocated stalls close together, and our Waverley star was the first to arrive. There to keep an eye on him, his owner, Queensland Cabinet Minister, Big Russ Hins. Well, there's two things in life. There's politics and racing for me, and Saturday it's racing. It's like Sunday is church. So the Rawson Stakes today is much Rawson more important than in Canberra. The most important thing on earth to me today is the Rawson Stakes. Will it be the most important thing, do you think, uh, come 320? It's going to be a great race, and you've got wonderful weather. 
and I think that every owner of a horse in that race just wants a fair go. And you'll find that uh, if they get a fair shake and it's a matter of tactics then and luck, and uh, that's how the race will be won. At Talak, last year's Melbourne Cup winner was the next. He was walked around quietly, but everyone was looking for Bone Crusher. His legion of fans just couldn't see him anywhere. But trainer Frank Ritchie had a good reason for that. Well, there's always a lot of pressure with a horse like Bone Crusher. Uh, my main concern at this stage is to make sure that he uh, he uh, is settled and uh, as relaxed as we can get him, because he does get a little uptight race day. Is he settled? He's pretty good. Yeah, I'm very happy with him. We've got him out the back in the shade there, where it's a bit cooler. The temperature's a bit high out here. And away from the crowds? Yeah, he's, uh, he doesn't mind crowds too much, but, um, you know, as I say, the heat is, is uh, the problem, um, so we're keeping him in the shade out there. Well, Mike, like everyone else out here at Rose Hill, I think it's going to be one of those races that we won't forget for a long, long time. So uh, I think with only a few minutes to go, it's time to go and get the best possible vantage point. One of many faces in the big crowd, Johnny Gatfield. Let's uh, get out there now live to uh, our man, our caller, Johnny Tapp. Good on you, Mike. Well, I'm feeling butterflies like everybody else at Rose Hill today. As a matter of fact, uh, I can't believe that a Rawson Stakes could create this much interest. It's more like a Melbourne Cup or a Golden Slipper. Just an amazing atmosphere. The two horses, the two champs in the parade were completely befuddled by all of the fuss. Uh, if horses could talk, I'm sure they both would have said, what the hell's all this about? Let's get out there and put on a race for the public. I've never seen a bigger battery of media, television cameras in particular, in the mounting yard at Rose Hill in my life. Uh, Ken, uh, it's just hard to believe it's a Rawson Stakes. Yes, John, uh, you think it was the Golden Slipper or the Melbourne Cup, uh, or certainly our premier weight for age race, the Tankard Stakes. But it's the Rawson Stakes that's at an ideal distance today, as you've said before, as Mike reiterated, of 2,000 metres. Well, the punters have certainly slammed it on the two favourites. They love the champs, and if you look at the toad odds, Bone Crusher is at uh, odds of about 10 to 9, going to pay $1.05 for 50 cents. Our Waverley Star, well, he's going to pay at the moment of $1.40 which is odds of round about seven to four. We'll go from the top. It's 11 to two at Talak. 12 to one, a bit like a 30 color page, 10 to nine bone crusher, seven to four hour Waverley star, 33 periscope, 50 Bill Bengira, and my card, he's round about 18 to one. It's between 16s and 20 to one. Me, I'm gonna be a little bit of a spoiled sport, John. I think they've all forgotten a bit like a, here's form super, and I reckon his run was just as good as our Waverley star in the Chipping Snorton Stakes a fortnight ago. I've had something on a bit like her. Ken, I don't think any horse feels better uh, than a bit like her. I noticed when the big chestnut horse went out onto the track, he pig-rooted, kicked up his heels a couple of times as much as to say, by crikey, I feel good, let's get at him. Now, the Rawson Stakes field is just about intact in the starting stalls. The colours of Sheikh Hamdan bin Rashid Al Maktoum are the last set of colours to go in on At Talak, Ron Quinton's mount. And now the stage is set, 2,000 metres, prize money of $175,000, hardly appropriate really for a clash like this. But that's just the way it turned out. They're racing in the Rawson Stakes and it looked a good level start with a bit like her immediately going back to the tail of the field and Colour Page bounded out in front. Bone crushes level with him early and Maya Card and Beal Bangor are wide out now crossing to go to the lead over the crossing at the 1800 mark followed by a Waverley Star trapped a bit deep early and going up into second spot now. Die immediately eased back to fourth on Bone Crusher in the run to the 1600 metres mark. A bit more than a length into At Talak on the outside of Colour Page followed by Periscope and a bit like her as low as the Rawson Stakes field wheels to the back straight. Towards the 1400 mark and Wayne Harris had taken Beal Banger into a clear cut lead. Opened up a break of five lengths on our Waverley Star with the job of taking the field up to the leader and Bone Crusher immediately with the drop on our Waverley Star. He's a length away in third place on the outside of Maya Card and then Periscope on the outside of At Talak followed by Colour Page and two lengths away last is a bit like a down the back they run to the 1000 metres mark and Beal Bangara went further ahead opened up a break of five lengths on Waverley Star a half length away Bone Crusher on the outside and Shane Dye in this war of nerves is not going to let our Waverley Star get too far away from him he wants to keep him in sights every step of the way at the 800 Beal Bangara by two and a half lengths to our Waverley Star Bone Crusher's about a length and a half away in third place being heeled along a bit by Dye Bone Crusher losing ground Maya Card has gone up on the inside of him as they near 
near the turn, three or four lengths away at Talak, followed by a bit like a hard ridden but coming into it, and then Colour Page and Periscope as they turn for home. Beal Banger are the leader, our Waverley star in second place, Dittman wondering where Bone Crusher is. He's about two lengths away on the outside under the whip and struggling. Bone Crusher, our Waverley star, exploded to the lead. Maya Cards the danger, if any. Bone Crusher in third place is labouring. Maya Cards the danger to our Waverley star. Is it another Spear Chief and Ajax job? As Maya Card ranges up to our Waverley star, Bone Crusher five lengths away. Maya Card with Mark de Montfort going for home and the three year old Maya Card raced away to win it by three lengths to our Waverley star. Shades of 1939. Bone Crusher's in third place. He was gone at the 600 metres mark. And then a bit like a followed by Colour Page, Beal Bangara. The Melbourne Cup winner at Talak found them too sharp at the 2000 metres journey. And Periscope is last in a sensational Rawson Stakes. Maya Card, Mark de Montfort, has done a spear chief in winning the Rawson Stakes at odds of 20 to 1 on the totes and about 15 to 1 with bookmakers shortly before they jumped. All was not well 700 metres out when Shane Dye started to ride Bone Crusher along hard. It was obvious there that he was worried sick. Dittman on our Waverley star looked pretty confident as he tracked Beal Bangara into the straight. Mark de Montfort, who had never left the fence on Maya Card, travelling in fourth place on the inside of Bone Crusher, switched around the heels of our Waverley star 200 metres or a bit less, 150 metres out, and home he went with the three year old Maya Card staging one of the biggest boil overs in racing history, reminiscent of this very same race in 1939 when a horse called Spear Chief, ridden by the late Morris McCartan, beat the 40 to 1 on favourite Ajax. John, what a performance it was. Maya Card left the others with no excuses. He didn't just beat them, he thrashed them. Waverley Star and Bone Crusher had every chance, and you don't want to throw cold water on the Tinkered Stakes, but boy, oh boy, you need Maya Card in the race when you're talking about champions now. He won the Autumn Classic by eight lengths, and I think our friends on TV New Zealand will agree that this is some three-year-old, and he's sure going to give title light there. Glamour Philly, a run for her money in the AJC Derby at Randwick next month, and what a race it's going to be. I said in my column this morning, John, that I thought... Uh, Bone Crusher and our Waverley Star, we built up a bit too much euphoria on the strength of one run. I don't think there are any Kingston towns. No, Ken, I'd have to agree with that. Uh, I, I just can't get over the fact that Bone Crusher was beaten so far from home. Just after they got past the 800 mark, it was obvious that Shane Dye was worried. He started to push the big chestnut along, and at that stage of the race, Maya Card, travelling on his inside, was definitely going better than he was. Our Waverley star at that point still looked to be going well enough to win. In fact, when they turned for home and Dittman let loose, Mick was obviously only worried about Bone Crusher, and he thought, now, I've got to get a break on uh, Big Red because uh, he won't be able to give me a start and a beating, but I don't think in his wildest dreams Dittman would have imagined that it was Maya Card ranging to him on the outside. Maya Card races in those conspicuous blue and white striped blinkers and that would have been the first thing Mick Dittman saw when he looked across. He knew they didn't belong to Bone Crusher and he must have got the shock of his life when he saw the blinkers of Maya Card. Uh, Maya Card is trained by Dr Jeff Chapman here at Rose Hill and that will be without a doubt even though he's won much bigger races than the Rawson Stakes I think that'll be the thrill of a lifetime for the Doc. He's won big races in the past with with good horses, but he's been very wrapped up in Maya Card for a long time now. The horse won the Autumn Classic on a heavy track in Melbourne back in February by eight lengths. He then failed in the Alistair Clark Stakes at Mooney Valley. I don't know what happened that day. Maybe he didn't handle the Mooney Valley track. But today, with this big pull in the weights, in receipt of four kilos off Bone Crusher and our Waverley star, uh, he, he ran a tremendous race. He registered 2.2.9 for the journey, so it wasn't a fast run, Rawson Stakes, naturally, on a dead track. Uh, they were, in fact, over two seconds outside the race record, race and course record held by Dalmacia. Uh, but a real anticlimax. I think the majority of the big crowd out here at the moment are just gassed, flabbergasted, uh, disbelieving that they're idle the great big red bone crusher could be the first horse beaten and finish a long long way from the winner the margins are three lengths by three lengths 
So Bone Crusher has wound up six lengths behind Myocard. Uh, I don't know, but I'll be very interested to hear the post-mortems from Shane Dye and trainer Frank Ritchie. All right, our next telecast race will be the seventh, the Star Kingdom Stakes. Let's see what Ken thinks of this. The Australian Athletic Championships are on this afternoon at the Sydney Athletic Field. And if you go out there, the runners in all the circular races that have drawn the outside get a start. Here at Rose Hill, you've got to take potluck if you draw outside. So I think inside barriers are big advantages, particularly when a field's as even as this one. That's why I'm going for TAB number two, New Atlantis, who's drawn barrier one. At his last start, New Atlantis finished seventh in the Liverpool City Cup at Warwick Farm. That day, he drew 15 in a field of 15, and yet, after a very hard run, he was still able to hit the lead in the home straight. Today, from barrier one, I reckon he'll ring up number one. OK, Ken, now we'll be back shortly with more of the Australian Arm Wrestling Championship on Wide World of Sports. No, you can't. He, uh, he was left for dead by Vaux Rogue in the Alistair Clark down here over 2000. Before that, of course, he won the Autumn Classic uh, by eight lengths at Caulfield on a wet track. Maybe the sting out of the ground has helped him. Well, it looks that way, Brian. Anyway, they're racing in Adelaide. Here's Ron Pat. It's a hardy start with the exception of Star Gypsy, who hit the ground last with Conceited Man and Muffler. Regal Firmino early pace. Away quickly, Scarvilla Fidera, and pushing up between them, Laboot on the air. Eureka Stockade was next from Well Kept, and on the inside running next was Net Call. They were followed further back by Just a Hobo, who's getting between horses. Uh, Mr. Rubble jumped better today. Elusive Gamble just ahead of him. Well Kept is trapped wide. Up there with that Division 2 as they Work past the 1200. Rebecca Gay is close handy. A length and a half further back behind those disco gambler outside of Conceited Man. Muffler back to the tail. The grey and racing on the outside of Star Gypsy. Down the side at the thousand and the leader Regal for me. By a couple of lengths to feed her and given a little bit more rain. Strode out two and a half clear now. Scarvilla third the Territorian. Back in behind the Eureka Stockade outside of Net Call. A couple away just a hobo. Well kept four deep down the side. Laboot on the air in between horses. Elusive gambler improving on the rail. Mr. Rubble crowding up behind them, can't get a run, and around those conceited men. Disco Gambler's not going to try and get through the field. It's off around them at the 600 on the turn. Then Muffler as they pack up, followed by Rebecca Gay. Ah, oh, gee, they're racing at close quarters, and two to Star Gypsy, the one that's not in the race at the moment. 400 to go, and there look to be a dozen chances in this as they swing, where on the outside, Scar Villa beat off Regal for me, and the Territorian horse got away too in front. And net call second, down the outside, well kept. Disco Gambler, Mr. Rubble got a check. It's Scar Villa though the leader at the 200 metre mark some bubbles may burst in this as well don't worry just about the Ross and stakes Scar Villa clear trying hard disco gambler well kept Mr Rubble flashing home when it's all after, over after a check but Scar Villa wins it the wheels have fallen off here too disco gambler second third well kept fourth Mr Rubble then came Rebecca Gay they were followed by net call then feeder are followed then by Regal for me then conceited man followed back behind them by muffler Further back in the field behind those elusive gambler, just a hobo. Laboot on the air, followed by Eureka Stockade and Star Gypsy had a good look at a lot of rump stakes. She was last all the way. Well, another upset, and in Adelaide it's 14, 6 and 5, as called by Ron Papp, Scar Villa, uh, Lloyd the winner. Second was Disco Gambler, Johnny Letts, and third, well kept, Lee Shepherd, 14, 6 and 5. The numbers after the fourth event, the answer Tatis 155, our Waverley Star, 50 cents, Bone Crusher, 55 cents. The Quinella 1440 trifecta $62.55. It's correct weight in that one. Light is on. Set to run and they're racing. Alarm won the start down on the inside. Jumped in front. Aliquin Edition began fast with Drill Burn Miss from Mia Stella and Judge's Prize. Further back, Lady of Renown from Para Perfect. Over on the inside, Red Lily Lady and back behind them, Top of the Silk sitting out wide from Borna Lady and Damsel last of all. At the turn out the 950 metre mark, Alarm went up on the inside with Judge's Pride. Drill Burn Miss out three deep. Aliquin Edition has gone up to them now out four wide. Two lengths further back, Mia Stella with Para Perfect off the fence from Lady of Renown. A length and a half then out wide making some ground top of the silks and two lengths to Borna Lady. Red Lily Lady back on the rails and two to Damsel. At the 600 metre mark an out wide eloquent addition a length and a half in front of in second placing Drill Burn Miss and they're about two lengths in front of Para Perfect. Top of the silks out very deep with Lady of Renown and back to the inside Alan. Then Mia Stella 400 out eloquent addition the leader. Moving up Drill Burn Miss on the outside raced up and grabbed it at the 300 metre mark from Para Perfect. Then Lady of Renown and they've got away from the others top of the silks. Drill Burn 
Burnness on the outside, put ahead in front and it's fighting it out now with Eloquent Edition coming again. Drill Burn Miss drew ahead in front, Eloquent Edition fighting back. They're five lengths in front of the others. It's Drill Burn Miss a long hit in front of Eloquent Edition. Lady of Renown rattling home down the outside. Drill Burn Miss in front, she's got there. Drill Burn Miss ahead on the line, Eloquent Edition. Lady of Renown third from Para Perfect and then top of the Silks Damsel. Then Born a Lady from Mia Stella, Red Lily Lady from a Lady of Renown, $2.15. For Quinella, $13.25. Trifecta, $209.95. Let's return to the commentary box. Noble Times, an interesting runner, has a good New Zealand record. Wayne Garratt is still a bit edgy. Away they go. Alley Savage missed it about a length or so. Sinclair and Tasman Dancer with Noble Times, the three best to begin. The Cloisters and Midnight Fever handy. Then Wangaratta Candida followed by Lily Antoinette and last in quite a well-packed upfield is Alley Savage. As they travel 300 and Sinclair leads the way by nearly two lengths on Noble Times. A length and a half Wangaratta. A half to Tasman Dancer the outside. One and a quarter of the Cloisters keeping Midnight Fever snookered. A length further back Lily Antoinette from Candida and last LA Savage to the 600. And Sinclair a length and a quarter on Noble Times. A couple Wangaratta and Tasman Dancer. Then the Cloisters. Midnight Fever's badly cluttered away from Lily Antoinette and Candida. And still last of all is LA Savage. They commence the run around the bend. And Sinclair leads. Noble Times second. Wangaratta third. Very wide the Cloisters. And he's trying to get out on the favourite Midnight Fever but no hope at the moment. At the 250 metres. And Sinclair shows the way. He still can't get clear on Midnight Fever, second Noble Times. Now Midnight Fever seeing a bit of daylight from Tasman Dancer and Wangaratta. She's coming quickly now. Midnight Fever after Sinclair. Ah, she's got to get up. Midnight Fever. She raced to Sinclair. Oh, gee, she is a good filly. Midnight Fever's overcome difficulties to beat Sinclair. Third Wangaratta, then Noble Times. Tasman Dancer, followed by on the outside the Cloisters, Candida, Ale Savage, and last Lily Antoinette. And the numbers there: one, four, and six. And here's a replay of the last 100 metres or so of that race. Midnight Fever, you can see her in the green colours with the blue sleeves and she had to do a left-hand turn there. Ron Quinton looked as though he was going to be shut in for all time, but look at the filly explode once she gets out and she gobbles up the leader Sinclair, two to its one in the last 50 metres and a great performance by Midnight Fever and she's certain to be one of the favourites for the upcoming Golden Slipper Stakes. And correct the wide in Romantic Sydney. Romantic Joke and also Bywaters Road. Romantic Joke, the southeastern that likes to lead and is fighting for the lead out of the straight with Nan Gary, who doesn't mind bowling along in front either, so they might have a bit of a war here and set it up for something behind early. Bywaters Road on the outside, on the inside, Magnum Special, Zoom Cloud gets the run of the race. Just in behind those then as they settle fully, Lady Joanna. On its outside, Mistulation, followed further back by Fantasy Night and Court 3 Deep, always touchy. Over on the inside, side of those as they shape along the side nearing the 1800 metre mark came Storm Joy and three lengths away behind those Bright Fontaine and two and a half Mahias. Well the leaders are cutting at each other. It's Nangari on the inside and Romantic Joke. They're both trying to settle them now the riders but they're all fired up. Nangari pulling hard against Young Vart and Romantic Joke fighting against Young Jolly. Now he's managing to settle it in behind Nangari and they're three or four in front. Always a loss going to get them going again though. It's race always touchy I should say racing right around the outside Side. Going with it, Magnum Special as the pace slowed nearing the 1400. Passing it now from Zoom Cloud by Waters Road. Further back behind them, Lady Joanna. They were followed by Mistulation and then came Storm Joy. About a length and a half Fantasy Night. Two away to Mahias and three to Bright Fontaine. At the 1200 onto the side of the course and the leader Nan Gary a length always touchy. In third posse, Romantic Joke followed then by Mistulation between Zoom Cloud three deep and Magnum Special the rail. A length and a half away, Mistulation going up by Waters Road was with it. Over on the inside then came Lady Joanna and they were followed further back. Fantasy Night Storm, Joy Mahias and four away to Bright Fontaine struggling to keep in contact. 800 to go. Nan Gary only a half three quarters in front. Always touchy going